Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus for all your needs. For all your needs. If you receive, my God will set you free. If you're feeling down, if you feel down, down as can be.
Lord, I recommend. 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 I Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We heard the male chorus. They said, I recommend Jesus. Amen. I recommend him because whenever we need him, all we had to do was call him. Amen. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way, led us to the house of prayer. So since we're here, we might as well give God our best praise. Amen. How's everybody this morning? I come to read our Great Commission this morning. Can I get everybody to stand, please? Matthew chapter 8, verses 19 and 20. It says, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whosoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. Good morning, Greater Rosa Sharon. Good morning. I am so glad that God saved my soul. Yes. And because of that, I don't have to worry about where I'm going when I leave this old world. I have a place to go where the streets are made of gold, where God's rest is weary so, to a building not made by hand. Come and go to that land where I'm back.
To that land. Amen. We want to go to the place where we can see his face, where we will hear him say, servant, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up a little higher. I'll make you rule over many. Amen. Come on, let's give the mayor of course a hand for blessing us this morning. Amen. It's prayer time. and We know that we all stand in the need of prayer. And this morning, we want to cast our cares on him because we know that he cares for us. And as we go to the Lord with our cares and concerns this morning, let us be praying for those who are less fortunate than we are. And let us remember all of the sick and shut in, not just only here at Greater Rose of Sharon, but all across this land and country. Uh, we know that we are in an election year, election season. Um, there's still wars and rumors of wars. Uh, we know that the Bible is being fulfilled. So we want to be praying that God's will be done. And we want to be praying that he would just continue to keep his hand of protection over us. And listen, whatever it is that's troubling you, whatever's keeping you up at night, just give it to the Lord. And watch and see how God will work it out in time. And this morning, I'm going to ask Reverend Campbell. If he would be our intercessor this morning, for we know that prayer changes things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever tried it? <laughs> when you call on God and patiently wait, that's what we talked about in Sunday school, being patient. If you just give him time, God will work things out. Amen. This time we're going to yield the floor over to Reverend Campbell to intercede for us. Good morning, Greater Rose. Good morning. As we, uh, as I say a lot of times when I pray, before I pray, I try to remind us that we should not focus so much or too much on our problems. It's because when, you, when, you, when you're focusing on your problems too much, you start, it takes your focus off of more important issues. So don't focus so much on the problem, but focus on the problem solving. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't focus so much on the provision that you forget about the provider. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Reverend Smiley here. Uh, let us, when we pray, let's pray for, it's okay to pray for yourself, but pray for somebody extra today. Pray for somebody else today. Please bow your heads if you don't mind. Our Father who art in heaven, the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, God, Jehovah, Yahweh, the only true and living God. The beginning and the alpha, I mean the beginning and the end. All-knowing God. 
God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you decided to wake us up this morning. Yes. Yes. God, we thank you because you blessed us with some clothes to put on our heads. Lord God, we thank you because you blessed us to have something to eat, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you because you blessed us with a roof over our heads. Lord God, we thank you because you put shoes on our feet. Lord, Lord God, we thank you because last night you allowed us to sleep and get some rest, Lord God. Lord, we thank you because there were all types of dangers going on all around us. But because of your grace, Lord, your mercy, Lord, you protected us and kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. So, Lord, we thank you. Then, Lord, forgive us when we don't thank you enough. Forgive us when we complain more than we appreciate you, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, when we look at what we call the little things as little things, Lord. Because truth be told, there's somebody wishing they had a portion of what we have. So thank you, Lord. Lord, I have to ask that you forgive us of our many sins, Lord. Sins of omission, sins of commission. Lord, help us. For, please forgive us for the sins that we don't even recognize. Then I pray that your Holy Spirit will illuminate us, illuminate our minds and our spirit so we can see who we really are and what we really are. Only then when we come to you in true repentance. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength, Lord God. I'm looking at healthy people, Lord God. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord, there are some that are sick in their bodies in hospitals and nursing homes. Some are, are, are bedridden at home, Lord. Some are in hospice care, Lord. Yeah, yeah, we pray for those yeah. people, Lord, that you would touch and heal their bodies. But most of all, Lord, we need a spiritual healing. So I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will cause us to walk the way we're supposed to walk. Pray the way that we're supposed to pray. Talk the way we're supposed to talk. Love like we're supposed to love. Only thing we can do on our own is fail, Lord God. Pray for those that are experiencing, that have family members in a war. Pray for those that are homeless. Uh, pray for those that are incarcerated, physically incarcerated and spiritually incarcerated. Pray for our pastor that you continue to bless him and feed him as he feeds us, Lord God. We pray for his family. That you they can continue to, to be his support system. Pray for his wife. That she continue to be the help me that you have called her to be. Lord, there's just so much we could ask you for. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you touch my grandson's body. Lord, you are the first hematologist that there ever was. So I pray, Lord, that you touch his blood right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're not going to worry. We're going to trust you. Yeah. Forgive us, Lord, when we worry more than we trust. Lord, we love you. And we know you love us. Because you gave your only begotten son. That's how much you love us, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. neighbor and say, God, you've been good to me. Look at him. Tell him, Lord, you've been good to me. I'm going to tell y'all something. God is, is a powerful God. You know, sometimes I just, I can go back and I think it was 76. Went to get me a little house. Pastor. Credit was bad, <laughs> but I knew somebody that was hot. 
I'm so glad. How many are you glad out there? And I can stand right here and say that the Lord has been good. Show. Tell y'all something. I didn't have no money. No money. A lot of my friends thought that was funny. But I'm so glad today I can stand right here and say that the Lord. sometime y'all yeah. I may not drive well, a Mercedes B yeah, yeah. but I'm so thankful for the little car that you gave me yeah. I may not live well, in a condominium but I sure thank you for the little house you gave me thank you thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, Lord. Pray. 
Praise the Lord, saints. I think Dink said it best. He's been good. Amen. He's been good. To God be the glory. It is wonderful to stand before you this morning to give you our Greater Rosa Share and Morning announcements. And they are as follows. My name's Christy Campbell. Um, we've had a lot of events go on this month for Black History Month, and we are down to our last event, which is today, where we're going to have Soul Food Sunday. Amen. So Soul Food Sunday, following the morning service, we are asking those that can and will donate $10. Um, donations may be given to Sister Alexander. Thanks for your support. Okay, notes from the uh, administration. Your 2023 contribution finance statements are available for pickup. Please see Sister Vaughn following the morning service. And just an FYI, this is the last Sunday to be able to pick those up. So for those who's trying to get their returns, this is it, okay? Uh, a reminder, in accessory prayer, uh, Sundays, 8.30 a.m. in person, Sunday schools, Sundays, 9 a.m. online and in person. Morning worship, Sunday, 10 a.m. online and in person. And Bible study, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. online. We have here birthdays for this um, remaining of the month. We have on the 27th, Sabrina Batty. Also uh, on the 27th, Jamina Green. Jamia Green. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Okay. And also on February 28th, Hans Rollins. Yeah. Yay. And on today for his wedding anniversary is Reverend uh, Blood and Sister Blood's, at, wait a minute, 56 years. 56 years. It is the 25th, right? Today. So to God be the glory on that. Uh, let us remember the sick, hospitalized, shut in, oppressed, homeless, incarcerated, and those who are less fortunate than us. Let us remember those, in, remember them in visitation, financial giving, but most of all, remember them in our prayers. Uh, let's see here. Let me check the congregation. Oh, I got my glass on. Do we have any visitors who would like to stand and be recognized by our pastors? You may state your name and church home if you like. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start with this always ladies first. Oh, you got it. Did you want to give your name? Man, come on, praise God for our visitors today. Listen, you could have gone to church anywhere in town, but you chose to fellowship with us, so we thank God for you on today, as well as those who may be tuning in for the first time via Facebook Live. Amen. We thank God for you. Greater Rose of Sharon, it's just good to see you, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, once again, we thank you so much for coming to Greater Rose of Sharon Baptist Church, and we enjoy. We pray that you enjoy the service and the rest of the service. Thank you so much. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Sister Campbell, for our announcements. Uh, as she was saying, that we are wrapping up a, a, a full month of celebrating celebrating Black History Month, and we're going to uh, close out on this uh, Sunday after service with Soul Food Sunday. Amen. Folks are already saying hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So there's food in the back. Uh, for those of you, if you can, let's, let's, let's fellowship after church. We, we've got some food prepared. Amen. And we're going to finalize Black History Month uh, with a good fellowship meal. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that. Uh, I want to point out something inside of your bulletin. Uh, there's a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., it says, the time is always right to do what is right. 
the, the society we live in says it's all right to get revenge. The world we say, live in uh, says it's all right to uh, give something back uh, to the person that gave it to you. But Dr. King said the time is always right to do what is right. Listen, y'all, we talked last Sunday, I believe it was last Sunday, we talked about pray uh, and love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Love your enemies. We're going to be mistreated as believers. There are people that dislike you for the mere fact that you are Christian. Now, the fact there were some people who didn't have a problem with you until they found out you were Christian. Listen, y'all, we're not going to do this back and forth with people. We don't want to return evil for evil. Christ is our example. And the Lord loved and forgave. And you and I as believers, as Christians, the root word of Christian is Christ. So he is our example, and we must do things the way the Lord laid it out for us to do. So listen, it's time, brothers and sisters, for us to always do the right thing. I, I, I uh, Reverend Walker talked about it in Sunday school. He said it's always right to do right. You may not get patted on the back. You may not have your name in lights. But in the eyesight of God, if you do the right thing, God gets the glory. Amen. 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 This time we're going to move a little higher in the service, and that's worshiping through giving. And I don't know about you. I'm just happy that I have something to give. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're going to ask everyone, if you would, if you would please stand and begin to proceed from the rear. What time is it? It's giving time. God gave his son. His son gave his life that we may have a right to the tree of life. God gave so much and he asked us for so little, just a dime out of a dollar. So won't you give, won't you be obedient to the word? He said in his word, if you give the way he asked you to give, he will open up the doors of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Now, if you wish to give to this great ministry, Simply download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create your account. Enter the place of worship, Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Givelify app, you can mail all your tithes, offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying, give your best and be blessed.
searching. Y'all should have seen me raising my hands and crying. It was all because I couldn't find a peace of mind. It was dead. It was dead. Oh, I kneel down and pray. I said, Lord, will you show me the way? way. I've been searching. I know we couldn't help but think about Deacon Morris when he was singing that song. Amen. God bless you, Mel Chorus. We're still, still asking the Lord to show us the way. Because he is the truth, the way, and the life. Let us pray. Father, we come now. In the name of Jesus, we, we thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the praise. We thank you for the songs. But, but Lord, if hearts are going to be changed, if people are going to be saved, the gospel must be preached. So, Father, I pray now that you would sit me down and you stand up. Speak to me and through me, Lord God, so... Your people may see none of me and hear all from you. Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross. Lord, I pray that your word fall on good ground on this day. And if there be a sinner in the midst or even watching via the internet, we pray that someone's heart be pricked and someone's soul be saved. But Lord, we thank you in advance for that sinner that will come. And we'll be mindful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, your Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? He's worthy. He is worthy of all praise. Amen. We.
thank the mayor Corps for ministering to us on today. Amen. Uh, these men come together and sing from the heart. Amen. Y'all heard Hans back there, didn't you? Amen. Thank God for a young soldier for the Lord. Amen. Amen. We praise God for them on today. Amen. And we're closing out Black History Month. Um, we've probably all made the argument that uh, one month doesn't cover uh, black history. Uh, amen. amen. If they just want to give us one month, it's up to us to keep it, keep it going at all times. Amen. Amen. We should be proud of our heritage and our history. Amen. But there's a word from the Lord this morning. And this is a familiar passage, but it's important that we deal with it because of what's happening in the world today. I want to call your attention to 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verses number 16. 2 Timothy 316. This is another familiar 316. We we know John 316. And, and we're going to look at 2 Timothy 316 on this morning. And this is a verse we've we've heard preached, we've heard it taught, but we most definitely want to look at it again this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, if you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17 says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. I want to talk this morning about the inerrancy of Scripture. The inerrancy of Scripture. Let's all say amen. Brothers and sisters, biblical inerrancy is the belief that the Bible is without error or fault in all of its teaching. Now, all religions have their holy books, but the Bible is the word of God. Now, see, God chose the word to reveal himself to all who believe. Brothers and sisters, none of us came to Christ without hearing biblical preaching. And I emphasize biblical preaching because there's plenty of preaching, but all of it is not biblical. And we're living in a time now where we are bombarded with information. You can go to any social media site and you can just get loads of information concerning religion, concerning the Bible, concerning God, concerning Christ, concerning the church. And if you're not careful, you can get thrown off track because now there are some things that are just absurd. And we got sense enough to know that, that there's no way that could be right. But then there are some things that it almost sounds convincing. I heard a man say that there's some truth to every lie. And if we're not careful, if we start to take in everybody's opinion, if we subscribe to every YouTube channel, if we follow every televangelist, before you know it, you will find yourself with information overload. Yes. And then there are times, if you're not very careful, with so much being said about what's true and what's right, it can become frustrating and you decide to walk away from it all. all right. yes, sir. 
This is what happened with Eve in the third chapter of Genesis. When Satan had Eve question God's word. One of the most famous questions that was ever asked. Did God really say that? Yes, sir. And as cunning as and slick as Satan is, he set it up with a question. Did, did God really say that? And church, if we are not connected to the word of God, Amen. we won't know whether or not God said it or not. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. You see, the Bible is the only source of knowledge of how mankind can be saved. Now, there are a lot of resources, but there's only one source that can teach and show us how to receive salvation. Matter of fact, let's just read it. Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 8, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse number 11 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The scripture saith. And brothers and sisters, I don't know how you feel about it, but the Word of God, the Bible, should be foundational in our Christian growth, in our, our development. We should be students of the Word of God. Yes. It's a sad thing to have a Bible and don't read it. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, it may take some research, it may take some digging, but the answer to life's questions are found somewhere in the scripture. And see, some of us, sometimes we research the Bible looking for specific answers to a situation. But we must understand that the word of God doesn't always give a specific answer. But the Bible does say we walk by faith and not by sight. You're not going to get every answer. What do I do about this problem? What do I do about that problem? He does not always tell you a specific way to deal with the situation, but we walk by faith, meaning that we trust that God will work things out according to his will and according to his divine plan. And when we look at the text, Paul is writing Timothy. And in the 16th verse, he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. When he talk, when we see that word inspiration, what it means is that the text, the word of God, the Bible that we read is God breathed. And when we think about that word inspired, it means that, that God is its definitive author. Now, while God used men to record his words, it is God himself who is behind what the men wrote. And the problem with the world today, there are so many people trying to discredit the word of God. People will say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. And there are a couple of verses that I can throw out there that would make you think. We get the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Then King Solomon said, there's a time and place to kill. So people would take two little verses without reading it within his context and say, see right there, the Bible contradicts itself. Well, listen, if you take the time to look at what the text is saying within the context in the Ten Commandments, listen, Moses was saying, listen, we don't need to kill each other. But then when Solomon says there's a time and place to kill, mm -hmm. 
Listen, there are times where we have to protect our family. Soldiers go to war and take life of the enemy. They're not considered murderers. They're fulfilling their duty. Consider the alternative. Let's say they didn't do what they had to do to stop the enemy. Well, now people's blood on their hands. So we have to look at things within its context. Every verse of the Bible, you have to look and when I say context, what I'm saying is read the Bible and see what does the author say to the original audience. That's how you determine context. And God breathed this. Listen, what we read in the scripture, this is what God left on record. Now, for all those folks who talk about the lost books of the Bible, well, the Bible isn't complete. What about the lost book? Well, what about them? This is what he left on record. If there were other books he wanted to be a part of this, he would have included it. We've got enough to handle while you're worried about what's not in here. <laughs> and, and, and Paul is reminding Timothy, who's a young pastor of the church of Ephesus, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. This means that the Bible is divinely given. Scripture is trustworthy. Because it, it is God breathed. God produced it. And watch this. An error is not consistent with God. In other words, like Big Mama used to say, God don't make no mistake. I see the problem with even us in the church, we just read things that we don't agree with. Because you do know the scripture we will call you out. There are some things, sometimes we won't read the Bible because we don't want the Holy Spirit to reveal what's going on within ourselves. Last Sunday, I talked about love your enemies. Pray for them that persecute you. Now that, I hadn't gotten any phone calls, but that upset somebody. Pray for them that persecute you. Pray for them who despitefully use you. Pray for them that, that's hating on you, dropping, always speaking your name. Pray for them that gossip about you. Pray for them that you know they're plotting against you. The text says to pray for them and love them. I had to stop for a minute when I was reading that text. Because your, your pastors and preachers ain't perfect either. You got to pray for people. See, the world says it's all right for you to knock the fire out of but the scripture says otherwise. And when we look at the word of God, church, what we must understand, whether we agree with it or not, whether we say amen or ouch, God said it. And as believers, if we say we love God and believe in God, then we believe his word and the Bible is God's word. It is through the word of God that he has revealed himself in Christ Jesus. Matter of fact, let me just read it for you. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no Christianity without Christ. God chose to reveal himself through Christ Jesus, and that is revealed through the word of God. I know some of us, we, we read a lot of books, and we've got a lot of material that we read, and uh, all that's good. But there's nothing in your resources that will connect you with the Heavenly Father. There's nothing in your resources that will get your soul prepared for heaven. It is only through the reading of the scripture. Listen, if we say we love him, then how do you love him if you don't talk to him? And the way he speaks to us is through his word. Now, we've all gone through that phase in our young life, uh, when we were young in our Christianity, where we were, had something going on in our life, and we were like, Lord, I just need you to speak to me. We've gone through difficulty. We say, Lord, I just need you to speak. 
Don't you know he will likely point you to the word of God? See, some of us are sitting out in the field looking at the dandelions and looking at the clouds waiting on the Lord to speak. You want the Lord to speak? Open your Bible. Because he speaks through his word. And if we've ever been to a place where we are ready to just really get to know him, we want to feel his presence. You want to know his power. We must pray and read his word. There's a, there's a saying out there. It says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. In other words, when you are ready and prepared to receive instruction, the teacher will appear. Your, your instruction will show up. It may be by way of his word, by way of your pastor, by way of your Sunday school teacher, or your neighbor standing outside uh, taking out the trash. The instruction can come when you are ready to receive it. You'd be amazed at the number of people who have been in church their entire life. But then there are some things in the gospel they ain't never heard before. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold up. I'm not trying to be overly critical, but if you've been a part of any organization for 15, 20, 30 years, how is it that there's something about the organization you ain't never heard? Think about it at church. We don't, on our jobs, they update material, training material changes, things get updated, but this is the same book we've been reading. All of our Christianity. When we were in the, in, in, in the elementary uh, Sunday school class, when Big Mama brought us to church, and now we're 40, 50, 60 years old. But listen, the same book that Pastor was preaching from then, it's the same book Pastor preaching from right now. So something's wrong, just being real about it. Something wrong, you've been in church 20, 25, 30 years, and we have never ran across the scripture that says, forgive your enemies. We've never run across the scripture that says, if we, if we love God, we'll, we'll keep his commandments. Come on now, we, we've been in this thing too long. And it's time for us to get serious about our Christian walk. Because one day we're going to stand before him. And I would hate for him to ask me, Crawl, why didn't you read my letters? <laughs> Crawl, why, why, why didn't you read my, my notes? I, what notes? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we say we love him. Yeah. But what is that love predicated upon if we don't spend time in his word? Yes, sir. Yes. You see, if you wonder why people get emotional when they come to worship service, if you wonder why people run, jump, and shout, if you wonder why people just can't help but, but outwardly express their joy and love for the Lord. They spent some time in this word and they realized if it had not been for the Lord. And, and, and I know there are some who want to compare what the preacher says on Sunday to what the video said on YouTube to what the, what the co-worker saying in the break room and you're trying to figure out who's right. Some people will say, well, the Bible can't be right because it was written by men, and men are not perfect. Then people bring up everything that was wrong with King James and what he was doing. People bring up all the things that the preacher's saying, and they say, listen, ain't none of it right. Everybody messed up. Well, you're right. Everybody is messed up. That's why we need this word. <laughs> and as long as we have, see, this, we're in that age, church, where, where false prophets have arisen. There's a lot of information that's being shared. And everything that falls under, um, the, under the umbrella of church or Christianity, we just think it's all right. Oh, they Christian. Okay. What are they teaching? Oh, that's a church. That's a pastor. What is he preaching? You see, everything that looked good is not necessarily so good. And the Bible is God breathe. And when we look at the word of God, this is him speaking to us. Paul tells Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable 
for doctrine. In other words, the Bible is your source for teaching and instruction, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Everything that we need in this Christian walk, we have it found in the word of God. It is not just something we pick up and bring the church with us. And now, because of smartphones, we don't even do that. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Bible app. There's nothing wrong with audible.com. If you want to read your read the book, read the book. If you want to listen to it on Audible, if you go to the Bible app, fine. But whatever you do, just get the word of God in. Because in this walk of life, keep in mind, Satan does not take off days. The enemy is always doing what the enemy does. And if you and I are not equipped with the word of God, we, we, listen, we will be bombarded and blindsided by the enemy's attacks. It is only the word of God that gives us a, a, a chance in this spiritual warfare. Reverend Campbell talked about spiritual warfare in the last three Bible studies, letting us know that there is an enemy, letting us know that we are all engaged in spiritual warfare. And let me remind every believer, whether you have been saved for many years or you're a new convert, if you are a Christian, you are engaged in spiritual warfare. The enemy is on our trail. But we don't have to be fearful because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And you wouldn't know that if you didn't read the scripture. You wouldn't know that Satan is already a, de a defeated foe if you didn't read the scripture. You wouldn't know that he says, I would never leave you nor forsake you. You wouldn't know that if you didn't read the scripture. Don't you know you only get about 25 minutes from your pastor on Sunday? One day a week. But you got your Bible with you. You can read it. Every day when, when, when Hans and Mark and all the young people uh, were presented with their Bibles, I told them, this is your Bible. You can read it whenever you want to. That's why I told them, this, this is your Bible. Read it. We don't neglect our physical body unless you're fasting. But that's only for a set time. We're going to feed our physical body. Yeah. So we ought to feed our spirit man. Mm -hmm. And we do so by spending time in the word of God. And the enemy will trick you into thinking that uh, uh, you, you really don't need to read that. You, you in church, you, you know about God. Uh, you've been in church your whole life. Listen, it is very possible. Don't miss this part. It is very possible to have the word of God in your mind and not in your heart. It, it is very possible to have the word of God in your mind, but not in your heart. That's why James says that we should be doers of the word and not hearers only. At this point in 2024, nearly everybody has heard the gospel. Now, the, uh, we have remote places out in, this, in the world, and we have traveling missionaries that are taking the, world, uh, taking the gospel to the world. But with modern technology and once again, here we are, 2024. Listen, most people have heard some type of biblical preaching, whether they are members of churches or not. You've heard something about Jesus. And in this world in which we live, we have to be steadfast to stand on the word of God, meaning that we don't have resources. The Bible is the source. This is not a book of rules. It's not a magic book. It's not a how-to guide. It's the living word. The living word that God has revealed unto us. And when we look at the word of God, listen, you, you ought to feel, I can't, I can't talk about everybody, but I'm, I'm talking about myself. You ought to feel something when you spend time Reading the word of God. When you realize that we were sinners on our way to an eternal hell. 
But then we look into the word of God and we realize that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You didn't know anything about that until you read the word. You may have heard it, but it wasn't internalized until you read it for yourself. There are some things that you, that you learn when you spend time in the Word of God. Let me, let me tell you what I told a men class. Years ago, I was the men's Sunday school class teacher. Let me, I'm going to tell you all what I told him. As a young man, I knew that adultery was wrong. But then I looked in the Word of God, and it says to look at a woman. Lustfully, you have committed adultery in your heart. And when I read that, I said, wow. I said, all right, Lord. I believe all of us have read something and we had a wow moment. We, we had a way of thinking that we thought was right. Then we looked at the text and had a wow moment. And it's all right to have a wow moment. Because he revealed the truth by way of his word. How much are we missing out on when we don't spend time reading the word of God? If we would spend time in the word, that's when the Holy Spirit would begin to reveal to us the way that we ought to live. There are blessings in spending time in the word. Once again, the Bible is not just a book of rules. But it shows us the will of God and the ways to be found pleasing in our sight of God. When people are trying to say that the Bible is outdated, they say in the Bible was, uh, it was just for Old Testament times. The Bible is, uh, it contradicts itself. All of these things are being said about the word of God. And once again, the, the question that Satan asked Eve, did God really say that? When God can, when, when the enemy can get you to question whether or not scripture is right, he got you in a bad place. Because once you begin to question the reality and inerrancy of scripture, then you start to try to validate it or compare it rather to other sources. There are people who read the Bible, they read the Quran, they read all of the other sources, and now you got all of this literature. And you're trying to determine what's right. The truth is found in the scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. When we look at Genesis 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning, God. You could, you could stop right there. In the beginning, God. But then John says, first chapter, first verse. In the beginning was the word. Now, if you compare Genesis 1 and 1 to John 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. So, so, so for those who, who are wondering why am I making the comparison, even at creation, Jesus was present. Some think he was just a good teacher. Some think he came along somewhere down in the future. But in Genesis 1 and 1, Jesus was present. Let me reference Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Christ has always been on the scene. There was the dispensation of God where it was just God in the Old Testament. Then there came a time appointed by God where he allowed himself to come as a baby in the manger. He had his earthly ministry. 
Then there came a time where he had to go to the cross. They nailed him to the cross. He hung his, blade, hung his head and died. Three days later, he rose again. He hung around on earth. But then he stepped on a cloud and went back to the Father. Then 10 days later, the Holy Ghost came. So there was a time where God was the key player. Then there was a time when Christ came. And there was a time when the Holy Spirit came and he abides in every believer even now. And there are people who say, show me that in the Bible, preacher. I said, let me show you faith. Because you're not going to find Trinity in the book. But you will find, let us make man in our own image. Well, who could he be talking about? He wasn't talking to Adam because Adam hadn't been created yet. God said, let us make man in our own image. So basically, God was talking to himself. Him, the Father, Christ, the Son. And the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. Now for some this might be over your head. But the truth of the matter is by faith. We can believe. He is the one who reveals it to us. Listen. What, what did Peter say? When, 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 when Jesus sent the disciples out. The 72. The 70 went out. He, they came back. And Jesus asked a question. Who do men say that I the son of man am? Some said Elias. Some said one of the other prophets. Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the text says, Flesh and blood have not revealed that unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. So the same Father in heaven that revealed it to Peter, he can reveal it to you and I. Some of us still, some of us been in church a long time. We got some questions. We got some concerns. Well, listen, the same God that revealed himself to Peter can reveal himself to us by way of his word. You're not going to get it on YouTube. You can get it in the book. And we have to learn to trust in his word. Speaking of Peter, Peter was fishing. And the Lord said, cash in that over here. Peter said, Lord, listen, we've been out here all night long, and we haven't caught anything. Peter was a fisherman by trade. He knew what he was doing. But then Jesus come along and said, cash in that over here. Peter said, Lord, listen, we, 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 we've been out here all night. We hadn't caught a thing. But nevertheless, since you say so, I'm going to do what you say. They cast at that net, being obedient to the word of God, and had more fish that they could, they needed help to bring the, the net in. It's just something about being obedient to the word of God. And the word of God it is the Bible. We, if we could just obey the scripture, it may not seem like it's making a difference. But when you stand on the word of God, just give it time. And the Lord will be, listen, he can't help but be faithful to his word. And when we stand on the word of God, we have all that we need to make it in this walk of life. Paul gave instructions and encouragement to Timothy. And he tells him to hold on to sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is found in the word of God. We learned of our need for salvation by the word of God. We learned that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We learned by way of the word of God that he offered himself up as a living sacrifice. We learned by, the way, by way of the word of God that without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. We, we learn that whosoever called upon the name of the Lord, thy shall be saved. We learn that from the word of God. We learn how 
he had an unfair trial at midnight. We learned how they beat him and whipped him and mocked him. We learned how he had to carry an old rugged cross and carried it up Golgotha's hill. We learned how they put nails in his hand and nails in his feet. People in the world look at that and they say, oh, that's a fairy tale. That stuff didn't happen. But we believe it by faith. You do know that the Bible says that the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But to us, well, it's the power of God. So it may seem like the preacher just stand up here, bunch, just saying a bunch of empty words. But there are those that believe it by faith. They pissed him in the side, hung him between heaven and earth, and he dropped his head in the lock of his shoulders, and that's where he died. But that's not how the story ends. Because on the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So regardless of what the skeptics say, regardless of what the intelligent people of the world say, those of us who trust in God must continue to walk by faith. I don't care what they say about the Bible is fake and it's, the Bible is outdated and the Bible is wrong and Jesus was really black and, and all this stuff you're saying. Listen, don't you know when we stand before him, it's not going to matter whether he was white or black because the Bible says we will see him in his glorified body. Listen, y'all, listen. You got to be careful who you listen to. Some people will make a compelling argument that the Bible is not right. Listen, I don't care what they say. I'm still riding with Jesus. You, you can come with whatever you want to. I got some folks close to me. They know, they know I'm a pastor. They say, check this video out. Okay, yeah, I'll check it out. Guess what? I'm still riding with, with Christ. <laughs> Regardless of what you want me to look at, as long as we got this right here, if we stand on God's word, we have what we need. Continue to trust in God, keep the faith, and God will be glorified. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Father, we come now at the close of the sermon. We thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that all scripture does God breathe. You, you breathe this word, Father God. And Lord, we live in a time now where they're saying that you're not real, the Bible is not real, that the church is in existence, uh, is non-existent. Lord, we're facing all types of persecution and ridicule and mockery. But, Lord, we'll continue to lift up the bloodstained banner. Yeah. Lord God, we thank you. Amen. We know that you are a true and living Lord, and one day you are coming back to receive the church. Yes. So, Father, we pray that you would strengthen our faith, Lord God. Yes. We pray, Father God, Lord, help us with our unbelief. Yes. Lord, we just thank you for being God and being God alone. And we'll be mindful to give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank you, God. Amen. Amen. There may be one here this morning who has never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. There may be one here this morning who you're already saved and you, you've just been kind of living life on your own terms and it's time to get back in fellowship with God. You may be here this morning and you just stand in the need of prayer. Jesus did say my house should be called a house of prayer. So if you're here this morning, whatever your situation may be, if you feel the Spirit of God speaking to your heart, you can come by Letter Christian Experience or the candidate for baptism. And all the Lord wants you to do is come. Would well, there be one today?